Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to enter and exit a car. This is the very basic way of doing it. So it's literally just going to be you start controlling the car and then you stop controlling the car for getting in and out. So this won't show an animation of getting in or the player in the car. But for a very basic game and just for basic starting to do this uh, for you, this would be quite good. So this has been a request as well. So again, if you have any requests, comment them down below or join my Discord server and ask me in there, which there'll be a link to that in the description down below. So I hope you found this helpful and let's get right into it. So like I say, this is very basic, so it should be quite quick and simple. So what we're going to do is just simply open up the level blueprint to start with. So go to blueprints up here, and open level blueprint. Um, for the car, I'm also using the content pack for the car which they make. So you can go to add new, add feature or content pack and then I've just got the vehicle there and then we're going to open up the blueprint we have for this car so for me that's in vehicle BP blueprints sedan and then the sedan blueprint here what I'm going to do is go straight to the viewport zoom out and I'm going to create a box trigger so up in the top left up here add component I want to get box collision like so name it whatever you want I'm just going to leave it as box and I'm just going to scale it up and put it in the right place that I want it to be and this is where you're going to be to be able to get in and out of the car so I think this is going to be good for me. If I'm in this box collision, then I can enter the car and obviously exit as well, but you'll be in the car. So that doesn't matter too much. So that's good for me. So I'm just going to compile that and then we'll open level blueprint. So blueprints, open level blueprint up here. What we're going to do is get event tick like so. So event tick like that. And we're going to cast to that sedan blueprint. So for the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get all actors of class like so. The actor class is going to be that sedan blueprint that we have there and of the out actors we're just going to get a copy like so and like this is basically casting to it but we don't need the object wildcard as this is basically what that is and what we're going to do out of this is see if we are overlapping that box collision so before we do that we need to go back to the sedan blueprint and we'll just create the collisions here so what we're going to do first is right click on our box collision up here add event add on component begin overlap and then do that again but this time add on component end overlap like so and make sure these are both for the box collision our other actor we're going to cast to third person character or whichever character you're using again do that for both of these so cast to third person character or first or whatever you've named it out of the begin and end overlap for our box collision and then we're going to create a new variable down here so hit the plus variable and I'm going to call this is overlapped question mark like so I'm going to set those out of both of these so set like that and obviously when we are overlapping it we're going to set this to true so tick it and when we aren't we're going to set it to false so leave it unticked like so so when we are in the box collision it's going to set this to true and when we're not in the box collision it's going to set this to false so we can compile that and go back to the level blueprint up at the top up here now out of the get here we're going to drag off this and get is overlapped like so and then we're going to right click this promote a variable and set it to is overlapped so the exact same thing but just in here instead so is overlapped question mark like so plug that in there like that so now we have this in here so now what we're going to do is get an action mapping as well so if we minimize this go to edit project settings up here and if we go to input down here we can create an action mapping which means if we ever press this key it's going to do what we want so if we hit plus there i'm going to call this one enter you can call this whatever you want so obviously this is very vague but that's just because i know what it's for and i'm going to set this to the e key so you can have this as interact as well actually that might be better for you but like i say i'm going to set this to e and this doesn't matter too much what it's named it's just for you so there we go i've got that there and then we're going to go back to the level blueprint i'm going to find some space right click and search for what you just named it so it could be interact anything like that but i named mine enter so action events enter like so on pressed i'm going to get a branch so hold b and left click plug that branch into enter like so the condition is going to be is overlapped there like so and then off of true so if we are overlapped we're going to just right click and get a possess untick context sensitive up there get possess like so and again that's going to be plugged into true like that so this is to get in the car now the target of this is going to be get player controller make sure you tick context sensitive again get player controller and the target in pawn is going to be a reference to the, our car so if we just select our car there drag and drop onto level blueprint we have a reference to it and we can plug that into the in pawn there which basically means it's going to possess or control the car blueprint that we have which is obviously what we want and folks we're going to leave like that and after this what we're going to do is just drag this out a little like this and then just before this branch we're going to come off pressed 
and get a sequence like so, put then zero into the branch. And this just means we can fire off multiple lines of code. Actually just put that again, drag this out and we can get a delay like so, a delay which then goes back into that branch like that. You can leave it as 0.2 or 0.1, just something very small like that so you won't notice it. And then we're gonna create another variable and I'm gonna call this one is in car. So question mark like that, make sure it's a Boolean again. And we're gonna set this to true after we possess the car. So we put get in the car, set in car to true. And then after the sequence of then one, we're gonna get another branch. So hold B, left click with the condition of in car like this. Off of true, we're just gonna possess the character again. So we can copy the player controller and the possess up here. So copy and paste down here like so. And this time we're gonna do the same thing to possess, but instead of the car, we're gonna select our character and then drag and drop that in there to get a reference to it. And just put that into the in pawn there. So what this means is when we press E, if we are in the box collision, it's gonna get in the car. And then if we're in the car, it's gonna get us out of the car. So we should set in car to false there as well. So we hit compile save this this should now work so if we minimize that hit play to test it we're pressing e nothing happens we go into the car here press e we've now possessed the car and we can drive the car about like so then if we press e again now we get back in the player like so so you can see this done works of getting in and out of this car obviously you can see the player stays there so like i say i told you the player wouldn't get in the car but you can possess it and control it. But if you wanna make it so the player disappears so you can't see them afterwards, I can do that as well. So if we go back into the example map here, the level blueprint, sorry. Then when we get in the car, what we do is after the set in car to true, we come off this and just cast to our character, mine being a third person character like this with the object world card as get player character like so. And what we're gonna do is as third person character, we're gonna set visibility of the mesh down there. So set visibility of mesh, plug that in there. And we're gonna set this to false, so unticked like that. And then we can do this again down here. So select that, what we've just done, control C, control V to paste in down here. And this time we're gonna set it to true so we can see it. So we are setting that to then ticked so it's then visible again. So when we get in the car, it's gonna hide the player, turn them invisible. And when we get back out of the car, it's going to show the player again. So what we're actually going to do instead of casting to the character and do what we did over here again. So we're just going to get all actors of class. So we come out of this, get all actors of class. The actor class being our character. So mine is third person character. Out actors, we're going to get a copy. And then this will plug into the target there like so. And again, we'll do the same down here. Make sure that's plugged in. Again, plug these in here and then plug in that down there as well. Now this should hopefully work. So again, I'll do something after this as well, but I'll show you that this now works. So play, go over here, press E, we get in, the player's gone, and then if we get out, the player's back. Now what I'm gonna show you is to actually teleport the player to be where the car is when you get out as well. So you're not just where you left off. So we go back to the level blueprint. You see it's all done in level blueprint. What we're gonna do for when we get out the car, so down here, we're gonna use the cast up here. So actually, because that's off event tick, we won't do it up there. We'll just get this cast again. So copy and paste that from up top. Get all actors of class for the sedan. Get a copy out of this. We're gonna get actor location like so, right click on the return value and split structure bin. And then we're gonna come off of the get actor class up here. So this get a copy, we're gonna set actor locations. So set actor location. And then again, right click new location, split structure bin. Plug that into the uh, get actor class there. I'm gonna double click this to a reboot node just to move this down here, just to make it look a little bit neater, like so. And then what we want to do is plug in the Y and the Z into there like that. And then the X, we're gonna come out of this and do a plus float. So a float plus float, plug that into the X and we're gonna add, let's say 100. You can mess about with this to see which works for you. So we'll start with that, see what happens, what it looks like. So we hit play, we get in, character's gone. And if we get out down here, stop the car, we get out, the character's there. And now the car went flying off because we didn't do it properly. We did plus, it should be a minus if we wanna get out, get out on that side out of x do a float minus a float and then let's say 100 again so you just mess about with this compile see what this is like minimize hit play we get in the character is invisible we stop it we get out but as you see what's happening is that's then putting us in the box collision so it's getting us back in again so we go into here 
back in level blueprint. We might just need to increase this duration here because that shouldn't really be happening. Here, compile, test this out. As you see, that worked, but again, we're not far enough over, so we just flipped the car again. So we increase this value. So again, this is what I mean. You just mess about with it to get the perfect one for you. Obviously, it'll be different with the size of each car and the size of your player, size of the box collision you've got but you just mess about with it. Ah, so actually it needs to be on the Y axis, not the X. So that's interesting. I thought it was supposed to be on the X, but no, yep, yeah, it is the Y. All right, I didn't read that properly. So that's simple. You just plug it into the X instead of the Y. But again, different for each car, for each player. Mess about with this. I'm just showing you how to do it. So we do that, pile, minimize, hit play. Now this should work. So if we get in, and so if we drive off now as well, you can see that that now works. Obviously the car's moving, so I'll show you again. We press play. We can go up to the car, press E to get in, the character's disappeared, we can drive around, and if we stop the car, press E, we get out of it, and the player becomes visible again. Now if that's happening, you get back in, that way because of the box collision, but that's also just because of the way I parked, I was in the box collision, so that just means you might want to make it a bit smaller, so decrease the size a little bit like that. Obviously I don't really need to, that's just because of the angle I was at. So we can press E, we get in, we now possess the car, the player has gone, we slow down the car, stop it, get out. We now have the player visible again and we're controlling the player. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We set it up so that we can press E to get into the car. This means that we are now controlling the car and possessing it. The player character has gone here as well, so there's no reference to it here. And if we then press E again to get out, we do get out of this car and the player character is now visible again. And it doesn't just put us here, it also moves the character to be where the car would be. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.